In this lesson, I'm going to show you how you can create a spreadsheet, share the spreadsheet, and then use JavaScript in order to connect to the spreadsheet object so that you can use it within your JavaScript code. And this is content coming right from the spreadsheet. We'll set up the parameters in order to make the connection, and I'll show you how to establish the connection and return it back within a usable object form, and from there, extract out the data as needed. So that's coming up in this lesson. Log into your Google account. I'm over at drive.google.com. Going to create a brand new spreadsheet. And then this is going to be the spreadsheet that we're going to use as a source for the data. So this is just a testing spreadsheet. So you can add in whatever data that you want to add in. So we've got some data that we can pull back from our JavaScript application. Let's give this sheet a name. I'll call it users. So we've got four columns here within the users sheet. The first row is going to be the heading of that sheet data. So once you've set up a, a sheet with some data that you're ready to use, go ahead and share it. And select down at the bottom where it says get link, select that and change that to anyone with the link so that they can access it. Copy that link, hit done, and you're ready to move on to the JavaScript where we're gonna be making a selection from this sheet. Let's open up our editor. I'm going to be using Visual Studio Code. Got a blank HTML file that's linking over to a JS file called Sheets. And the current JS file right now is blank. Got live server installed. You can also drag and open up the file within the browser, depending on what editor that you're using. I am using Visual Studio Code with an add-on extension called Live Server. So that allows me to open up a local server with the HTML file. So right now on the right hand side within the browser window, we're running the HTML file in the left hand side. I'm going to have the code that we're going to be writing in order to connect to the spreadsheet. I am also going to be using the dev tools where you can select inspect and console. So that opens up the JavaScript code so we can start writing into it and see some of the results from the code. Let's make a connection to the spreadsheet. So we're going to start writing some code here where we're going to need to have the sheet ID. And I already have the sheet ID within the URL. So I can just copy and paste that in to my JavaScript code. I got to do a view for the word wrap so that we can see the entire web page code. So right now this URL is going to be the same URL that we have here at the top. If you ever do need to get the ID out of your Google Sheets URL, the unique ID is going to be located here past the D slash and then this set of characters between the edit is going to be what the unique ID is going to be. And you're going to need that unique ID in order to identify the sheet so that you can make a selection of the sheet object and then pull that into your JavaScript code. So right now we're just going to call it sheet ID. And this is the ID that we're going to be using in order to make the connection. We're also going to set up a base URL. So this URL, I'm going to use the template literals, so the back ticks. And we're going to be setting up that URL that we have for the spreadsheet so that we can initiate the connection. And that URL is going to be the docs.google.com forward slash spreadsheets forward slash D. And I'm going to set this so that the ID can actually change. And if we do change spreadsheets, that we can easily update the code to accommodate the new spreadsheet. And then forward slash, and this is where it needs to change. It's not going to be edit question mark USP sharing. It's going to be GVZ, GVIZ for the Google visualization, and then the TQ for the query that we're going to be making and initiating. We also need to have a parameter for the sheet name, and the sheet name that I have is going to be users. So I'm setting all of these as parameters within the JavaScript code so that we can easily make updates to them as needed. So now that we've got that, we can create our basic URL that we're going to be making the connection to. And we'll also have a value for the query. And the query is going to be something that we can update. So right now for the query itself, it's just going to be a select. And we'll do a select asterisk to select all of the available data. And then we can I'll show you how you can customize your query selections to the spreadsheet data. So this also needs to be wrapped in URI components. So we need to encode that, encode it so that it's a proper URI component. So we're going to be wrapping the query with 
the encode URI component. So I'm using the backticks again for the template literals. We're going to start out with the base. So this is the base URL. We've already added in the sheet ID. And now we need to add in the parameters that we're going to be searching for. And that will include the sheet. And the sheet that we're going to be looking for is just going to be using whatever we've got for the sheet name. And let's also add in the TQ for the query value. And this will be whatever we just created for the query value. I'm going to add an event listener, DOM content loaded. And this will fire off a function, INIT, whenever the DOM content has loaded and it's ready to be interacted with. And for now, within the console, let's write ready just to make sure that that is working and invoking the function. So it looks like it is working. It's going to be our data array. And I'm going to keep it global so that we can add the content into that global data object. Let's make our fetch request to the URL. So using the JavaScript fetch method, and we're connecting to the URL that we've just constructed because this is promise based. Once we get the response back, return this response back as text because it's not going to be formatted in proper JSON. So we're going to have to do a little bit of updating and editing to get it into a more of a JSON type object. So returning back that response, and once we get a response back with the data, for now what we'll do is we'll just console log it out. And then I'll show you the updates that we need to make to the response object in order to use it properly. So when we do return this back, there's some excess content that's wrapping the JSON format. So you're going to throw an error if you try to use this part. And this is going to be the first 47 characters. And then we also want to strip out the last two characters from that content. So taking the returned response text, let's get it into a JavaScript object. Let's call it JSO. Uh, get the response content. And then using the JavaScript string methods, we'll slice out part of the string content. So removing the first 47 characters. And for now, we'll just log that out into the console. So that's the JSO. So that's starting with that curly bracket. And we need that for the, for the JSON parse that we're going to be doing. So we're moving out the first 47 characters. And we also want to slice out and remove out the last two characters of the string. So we can do that with a slice and then do a negative two on the slice to remove the last two characters is a usable object in string format that we can then take and do a JSON parse. And we're just going to wrap it with the JSON parse. And so now we should return back an object in the console that we can open up and we can see the contents of where we can see the table. And then within the table, this is where all of our data is going to sit. And also within the rows, we've got the various rows of content. Then this is all coming live from the spreadsheet so that we can use it within our JavaScript code. So we're going to clean up that object, and that's coming up in the next lesson.